Good evening and welcome to Alan's Italy. You know, some of my favorite shows have been the shows in which uh, we've done interviews with people who have been to Italy and simply spoke about the um, experiences they've had. Now, the two shows that we had uh, all consisted of videotaped interviews that we did either in our living room or in the living room of the people we interviewed. Uh, tonight is going to be um, an extension of that kind of a show, and it's my pleasure to welcome to the show Erica Hart. Erica, welcome Great to, to Alan's here. Italy. And uh, Erica uh, has recently come back from a trip to Italy, and uh, I'd like let's get into it and talk about it. So the first thing I'd like to ask you is the name of the show, and you chose this name yourself, is uh, a life's dream fulfilled. So explain that a little. Well, when I when I was in college, I had saved up some money, planned to go to Europe to, to study abroad for a semester, and. Uh, Instead, at the time, I had married my first boyfriend, <laughs> which didn't oh. work out. But in any event, I somehow, 43 years later, I yeah. still had not made it to Italy. Uh, I don't know why, but I've done a lot of other traveling. But I, I had never been to Italy. I always wanted to go to Italy. Right. And uh, I had an opportunity. My cousin and his girlfriend were there because she was teaching a semester in Rome and uh, I don't know if they invited me or if I invited myself I'm not really, oh, really? sure I, I thought he called you and said hey Erica why don't you come to no he didn't best it might have been but yeah. it's, it's a little okay. vague in yeah. my mind so uh, anyway my husband and I were invited and, and my husband was not interested in going at this time and I decided well I I'm just going to go for it. I'm not going to wait another 43 years. Right. <laughs> so. right. Okay, so you took the, you took the, So how long did you I go for? It was about two weeks. Right. And, uh, yeah. How long was your cousin staying there? They were there. It, it was a whole uh, college semester. So oh, it oh, was from January uh -huh. through mid-May. Right. And they had an apartment and were very well situated there. So it was, was, it, was it a large apartment? It was an apartment that had an extra guest bedroom, really a lovely apartment mm. in the Prati district, which was um, okay, really... Where is that? I, don't, I, I, I remember you said that before, and I had, I had no idea where that was. A stone's throw from Vatican City. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay. And a very, very nice neighborhood. Um, I mean, it reminded me, maybe I could have been in the Upper West Side. Uh, just really, really lovely, mm. big streets and uh, um, nice shops and all. And they were on uh, Via Crescenzia, it was called. And uh, you're not familiar. I'm not familiar <laughs> with that. I'm not. I'm not. No, I, I'll tell you, you know, uh, most people, including myself, spend time in, in the center. Mm. You know, I would say from where the train station is going south and then to the west, maybe to Vatican City. And even beyond that. Not really. Like people don't really go that go out there. Mm. So that's pro it was probably a nice, quiet neighborhood, though. More residential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it was near a, a large structure that was referred to as the castle. Um, would you know what I'd be told? The Castello, Castello Sant'Angelo. <laughs> don't know. <laughs> what, oh, we should set up. We could, we could have thrown another another picture. Uh. But there is. Okay, so if you go from um, the Vatican. A little bit to the north and to the west, you come to a round castle. Yeah. Cast Castello Santa. Yes. Okay. Ah. So that's a very nice location. It was. I, I was pleased. <laughs> okay. So we're going to analyze your trip from Excellent. beginning to end. So Excellent. that's that's our next step, and this is a step that no matter what I've tried to do to streamline, well, streamline the process. I can't, so I have to go to my computer and do all this stuff here. And here is the title of the show. It's Alan's Italy, show number 90, 94, A Life's Dream Fulfilled, Erica's Trip to Italy. And uh, there you are standing in the Roman Forum with the uh, Temple of Saturn behind you, which we'll get to a little later. But first, we have uh, a picture of, uh, well, explain it. Oh, that was myself, my cousin, and his friend. And uh, 
we were uh, we spent an entire day at Pompeii. It was kind of a wet day, as you can yeah, see, yeah. but nonetheless, it was it was just fantastic to be there. It was the most interesting place, and uh, we probably walked around for about four and a half hours or so. Right. We were pretty. And you drove there. You rented a car. He rented a Fiat. <laughs> a Fiat five hundred. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not such a car person that I noticed the model. Was but. it the kind where when you get to a stop sign, the car would, you know, and you stop, the car would turn off? Because that's the experience I had. Oh, my God. Uh, it, was, it was a fine, functioning right. car. It got okay. us there fine. We <laughs> right. Well, most, most uh, Italians own Fiat 500s, as okay. I'm told. So, you know, that's a... Okay, so actually, we start... Um, your journey in Rome, and this is one of uh, our photos of the arguably the most evocative scene in Rome, and that is the Colosseum. Um, and this is actually, and, I, and I, I had asked Erica for her own uh, pictures, pictures that kind of had special meaning to her, and this is the, the first one you gave me. Explain this. Well, um... I had just arrived in Rome. My cousin Scott picked me up at the airport, which I was very grateful for. And mm -hmm. uh, nice. we got back to the apartment, and he had to be somewhere. So we went downtown, and he said, Kid, you're on your own for about three hours <laughs> until really? we meet again. Wow. So I just started wandering around. And uh, before I know it, there's gladiators <laughs> and right, yeah. throngs of people. Yeah. <laughs> And I was at the uh, Pantheon, and a uh, magnificent building. I mean, I took various shots inside and outside, right. but I just wanted to catch a picture of the festivities with the, the uh, gladiators yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the throngs, because right. there were lots of people there. It was the week after Easter and a few mm. days before the canonization of these two popes, so the uh, city right. was pretty lively. Right, and that's a that's a, a busy piazza. You can't see it from this angle, but this is one of the busiest piazzas in uh, in Rome. It's the Piazza della Rotondo, uh -huh. and that's where the Pantheon is. So, out of the view, and I don't want to just you know throw in so many pictures, but out of view is the huge piazza with cafes around it, and mm. yeah. So that's a really great spot to. And, and did you start? Did you start everything kind of here well, in this spot? He, um... He was a few blocks away from there, so I kind oh, right. of wandered my, you know, wandered down there and then to the Trevi Fountain, and right, right. Uh, you know, I got thrust into the uh, the belly of the beast. <laughs> right, that this is after a nice lunch, of course. You know, right, right. I had to start the the trip properly, and I and it didn't disappoint. I uh... okay. <laughs> so you chose the Pantheon, which is arguably the best preserved oh, Roman monument. It was incredible, the yeah. age of that building and how magnificent it was and how what perfect condition it was in. Okay, let's... Now, you threw in this picture, and I found this really fascinating, so talk about this. Well, everyone was riding around town on these bikes, and it, it, wasn't, it didn't seem like the safest place to be riding around no, in a bike. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, there were some elderly gentlemen riding on these, and I, I remember seeing one woman in her spike heels and skin-tight pants getting onto mm. a bike, and it, it was just everybody <laughs> rode right, around in right. these. So I, I just didn't like this shot with somebody looking at these bikes, and they were all parked right. in a, a typical row. A typical street in Rome, you know, kind of <laughs> narrow, which yeah. made this street even narrower because I'd you say, can see that there are... These, I, I guess, you know, they're, they're, they're Vespas on both sides of the street. And, uh, you know, you got to be careful of these things because they can mow you down. That's true. Um, in That's fact, true. Rome is not the greatest place to drive. I've never driven in Rome. I've driven, you know, on the kind of on the outskirts of Rome, but mm -hmm. never in Rome. So that's a great shot. So, you, you know, typical street in Rome. And then you went to the... Uh, Rome train station. Yeah, a few a few days after arriving, right. uh, you had arranged this uh, wonderful experience. Oh, we forgot to talk about that whole thing. <laughs> okay, so I get a, a thank thank you thank you very much. You know, it's nice to have every show. It's nice to have a director. You know, with kind of. Well, and you need is, two minds, and then I, yeah, you, I know, you cover I know. everything. <laughs> so the second part of the story was that Erica called me, and said that she'll be in Rome, for a while, and she would like to take a side trip to Florence. And, uh, you know, would I kind of help her plan that, that part of it? 
And uh, not only did I plan the trip to Florence, but I also planned a stop off on the way to Orvieto, where I contacted my friend Franco Sala, who then um, organized kind of a day, a day out for you going to Civita and so on. So we'll get to that. But to get from Rome to Florence, and in fact also Orvieto, you had to go to this point, which is the Central train station mm -hmm. in Rome, and you got on. Um, it was a regional. A, 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 a red. Regionale, which Regionale. is a slow train, which makes about 500 stops between Rome and Florence, <laughs> and one of which is, of course, the uh, train station at Orvieto, and this is where you, you disembarked, and uh, that's uh, Franco. Um, and let me make that larger so we could... Yeah, we had emailed a few times, and we spoke over the phone, and... Uh, my cousin Scott's uh, uh, girlfriend, Miro, was fluent in Spanish, in, in Spanish, in Italian. You probably, that's okay. Franco probably speaks Spanish also. So she, she was able to, uh, to speak with him, and we set up a time when right. either he or somebody who works for him would, would meet us. And right. it, it turned out that it was a Sunday. The, th the three of us uh, got on the train, and... Um, he sent a young woman, Nina, who worked right, for him, right, and she picked uh -huh. us up and uh, drove us into uh, Chivita. And which... she picked you up right at the train station. Yeah. And drove yeah. you to Chivita. Yeah. Great. Okay, yeah. so we thank Franco, uh, a good friend of mine, and this is the first uh, picture of Chivita. It was talk it, about it, this. It was a, a kind of a misty, dreary day, but you know, coming upon this site was just amazing. I mean, we, uh, you know, when, when we had spoken, you were the one who guided me to visit Orvieto and Civita. And originally I had been planning uh, to visit another town in, in Tuscany. Yeah, you'd mentioned you wanted to go to Tuscany. And, you know, the, the time was limited. I only had two weeks. So basically I wanted to spend a good amount of time in Rome and right. in Florence. Mm -hmm. But this was really just such a perfect excursion. I mean, this was just such a breathtakingly beautiful spot I mean and and walking up to it you know every step of the way it's like you're you're on a pilgrimage <laughs> to get to right. this town you had to walk up this steep well, we'll get there uh, in a moment but you know this is and this plays into something I told you just prior to going on the air and that is that um, when I was with Lydia one summer I asked her if she could take me to the most wonderful town that she knows in central Italy and this is where she took me. Mm. It wasn't Tuscany. It wasn't Umbria, mm. which most people go to. It was uh, Alto Lazio, the up, upper part of Lazio where this is located. And this place just bowled me over. Mm. And I went there in 2003, came, went back in, in 2009. Now this is the walkway that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, we're out actually now, see we're actually now coming from the town of Bonareggio uh, and we go down this um, this path. Uh, we're dri you're driving down this, and at the bottom is uh, a place where there's a parking lot. No more cars after that. Everything's on right, foot. Right, right. And that's the uh, walkway. And uh, you know, how did you negotiate that walkway? Oh, no problem. <laughs> I'm a big is walker, right? so it, it was fine. Because this is a great way, this is a great angle. So you see the first part of it. Yeah, it was you rather see steep. That it's, it's simple. <laughs> but then, look at that next part of it. That is unbelievable, right? Well, and it gets worse, actually, as you get then <laughs> around the curve. There were various tour groups and everyone else was doing it. So, uh, right. you know, you were inspired by, you know, the desire to see what was going to await you up there. And you so, were with your, your, uh, your cousin. Yes. So how did they deal with this? Oh, they, they were fine. No problem. Yeah, they were, they were excited. Okay. They're, they're big travelers. So they didn't hold the handrail going up there? Because <laughs> I, I did that the last time I was there. I said, oh, oh, you have to... Do a little more hiking. <laughs> I, I really have to. So you got to the, so you got to the curve and then the the top and there's, you know, this is a 20, 2,800 year old town from Etruscan times. It, it was beautiful. Yes. And the and the introductory arch, although you can't see it here, yeah, you can sort of see it faintly. As you get up to the very top, right up here, there's an arch, mm. and that that arch is the twenty eight hundred year old arch that the Etruscans had built originally. And, you know, the town used to be bigger, 
but through earthquakes and erosion, it's kind of fallen off from the sides, so it's gotten smaller. Yeah, there, there was an exhibit uh, at the museum mm. there about the erosion situation, and they're really working to preserve this town. That's a big issue, so um, we, we did learn about that. Right. And, uh, and Population of, course, of 15, I understand. <laughs> oh, it went up. I thought it went down to like four. And then, well, yeah, you know, you hear various things. I, I heard 15, I heard four, I heard two. You know, then Franco sent me an email that said that the oldest resident had passed away, so it's now down to one, oh. and then it goes back up to, you know, it's, they have all this... Real spike in All population. this folklore, and there's, and, and there's no standardization. It just keeps changing as you go along, so... Okay, so this is the picture you chose of one of the streets. Well, just we, we had the you know we we started out the day with uh, with lunch at Franco's, and then we had the afternoon to just really tool around and take pictures and wander. You know, the, it really wasn't such a huge place to wander around. Yeah, There's yeah. one church, and, right. but just whatever you photographed was beautiful you know just the the curves the arches the angles you, you couldn't take a bad photo there so i just chose one that kind of suggested um you know you're walking down this alley and, and you don't quite know what you're going to find next and it, it was a lot of that that afternoon so no, plus uh, I, I had a couple of glasses of wine well, regional wine at, yeah. at franco's with lunch uh not to mention regional Pasta and truffles, which oh, yeah. was tell a us, Tell us about lunch. Tell us, <laughs> so what did, did he did he uh, just bring out stuff, or did you get to choose something from the menu? Uh, well, we were the first to arrive, oh. and we, we got to choose. And uh, he he started by bringing out a plate of delicious br bruschetta. Bruschetta, <laughs> yes, I want to get that right. right. And uh, it, it was really outstanding, and I know that because I had bruschetta the next day, which was not nearly as mm -hmm. outstanding. Okay. So, uh, I, and he su suggested the wine. He just brought that mm -hmm. out, and then we chose from the menu. And I just had some of the local pasta, which right. was a, a pasta unlike anything I'd ever had before. It was right. very thick and hearty. Was it peachy? By any chance, do you know? Peachy. Yes. I don't know what you mean by peachy. Pasta. That's a kind of that's a kind of pasta. <laughs> it it kind of was um, like a, a thick stick, but but kind of wavy sort oh, I see. of. Or, okay. Yeah, it was hard. It, it kind of irregularly shaped right. and very hearty. I mean, it was mm -hmm. it was very satisfying, and I I would always get whatever vegetables were available, right. and of course truffles were a big. And thing he brought there. you out a carafe of. Uh, of wine. And that, that was my first time since I had arrived drinking because I wanted the jet lag to dissipate right, the uh, right. first few days. Mm -hmm. So I was in a very uh, pleasant state of mind for the okay. afternoon in go. Chivita. And unfortunately, it wasn't a sun, mo it was a little bit of sun peeked through, but it was mostly a cloudy and drizzly yeah. day. But uh, it, it was still just lovely tooling around and. And I, you know, I think this is, I think you picked the perfect picture here because you really get, you know, these. The, the beautiful arches and the narrow streets and uh, yeah, and a little bit of that mystery that you don't know what you're going to yeah, come to when you walk down that path. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. Yeah. So okay, and this of course is Orvieto. So you're driving now from this in one one of my pictures. You you're driving now from Chivita from the south to Orvieto. Well, Franco drove us there right. himself, and uh -huh. he. I said he had served 119 meals, which he prepared himself. It was a busy Sunday. And at the end of the day, he drove us there. And he had to go back to Chibita later that evening to serve dinner. So right. this was more than mm -hmm. kind of him to do. Right. And w when we arrived, uh, he introduced us to two of his friends. And they took over and uh, really? took us around. They took huh. us to the Duomo and they took us to uh, a bell tower there uh, to right. the top we'll to, to, to see some beautiful moments, views. Right. And uh, it was just wonderful. You know, we really were taken care of. And, and of course, he helped me drop off my bags at the Hotel Duomo mm -hmm. where yes. you had... Yeah, we'll get there. Yes. Actually, next picture. <laughs> ah. The Hotel Duomo, which is... Uh, Right near the cathedral. It was a lovely place to stay. It was right off of the squares, beautifully located, yet so quiet and 
clean and 15 foot ceilings in the rooms. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was really a wonderful place to stay. I, uh, and, and it was kind of a, a wet, cool night. So getting back to such a, a, a wonderful sanctuary and it was, it was immaculate there. I took a bath there, which I don't often do in a hotel. So. Yeah, well, you don't get but, you don't get bathtubs that often, so it's you know. And it was it was just a lovely place to spend that night. Right. Yeah, they okay. had big umbrellas for and everyone of course, to this take. Is, this is the lobby. Mm. Yeah, it, it was. Thank you. That was a lovely, lovely place to yeah, stay. Yeah, I love that lobby. There, there is a painting that usually hangs right at the very back here. Yes, they had a lot of artwork yeah, by a local artist, yeah, and yeah. I'm blanking out on I'm his I'm blanking name. out also. <laughs> you know, if I go through my notes for about the next 15 minutes, I'll probably find I'll it. I'll probably but... come up with his name after yeah, we leave. Okay, but, uh... so that's the front desk that, you know, and uh, a very nice lobby. And then you sent me this picture, and at first I didn't know what this was. <laughs> this so, was going up to the bell tower. Tell us about it. And... Uh, this was where these two uh, Franco's friends had taken us, and uh, just gorgeous views all around. You know, a hundred, a three hundred and sixty degree views from up up top, and uh, the three of us were up there, and it was just magnificent. It was. Yeah, it looks very daunting. You know, um, it looks uh, like kind of a difficult trip pro up. Probably about five stories, but you oh, know, okay. we we bad. were excited to see what was on top. I. Right. In my younger years, I lived in a fifth floor walk up, so I'm not afraid okay. of the steps. <laughs> okay, and when you got to the top, uh, this is what you saw. And this is, as I told you earlier, my favorite photo of all the photos. Because oh, I've never you. been up this tower. Oh. So t tell us about, you know. Well, you really got, you know, it, it, it was nice that I got to see these spots because the, the next day, when I, the next morning while I was tooling around town, I managed to go to some down some of these streets, and I, I recognized some of the buildings from having seen them in the tower the evening before. But but I didn't only go that evening. The next day was a yeah. sunnier day mm -hmm. in the morning. Well, at least <laughs> partly sunny. We had a mixed bag of weather. Mm -hmm. But um, I got to uh, go up uh, in the sunshine and see it all over again because I, I just loved being up there so much. And I, and I was even up there um, when the bell rang, which uh -oh. <laughs> was kind of fun. How was that? That was loud. Uh -oh. <laughs> but, you know, if you stayed, I think, 15 minutes, you got to experience that. You're right, every 15 I think minutes. I, I think I was there for two ringings because <laughs> I didn't want to leave. <laughs> right. right. Wow. <laughs> well, I, I still can hear, so <laughs> So, you, yeah, so okay. you're seeing everything here. Yeah, this was, of course, just one piece of, of the view because yeah. everywhere you turned, you'd, you'd see a different I'm view. not totally sure of the direction, but the building on the left side, I think, was the, was the Pope's Palace at one point, which would make this kind of a... Oh, I'm trying to, trying to visualize this, and I just can't, I can't do it. I just don't know Orvieto well enough, but you could certainly see the hills in the background. This is, I'll tell you, you know, it's a cloudy day, so you really can't get... The true essence of how beautiful this is. But it was still gorgeous. But it was gorgeous. It was still right. gorgeous. Yeah, and those, you know, subtle colors, the uh, right. uh, different earth tones of the buildings. It was just beautiful. Mm -hmm. And the and the the people that Franco introduced you to brought you here. Is it? Yeah, they they brought oh, us there. They. Right. They got us up there free of charge. He was <laughs> well connected. <laughs> Never got me up there. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> they took us into the Duomo. Right. Which was okay. We'll uh, get to that. We'll get to we'll that. We'll get to that. Okay. First of all, this is the next day. Obviously, yes, yes. a nicer day. And there's you on top, just to prove to that prove. you did indeed climb it up <laughs> on the second day. And there's the countryside around it, which is pretty beautiful. Yes, and you could always find someone who was uh, available to take your picture. So. Right, right, right. Okay, so that was that. And then, of course, the amazing uh, cathedral. I found this to be the, the most cathed most beautiful cathedral of any that I was in, in, in Florence or Rome. I was just overwhelmed by how beautiful it was. And, and I learned that the, uh, the ceiling inside was 125 feet high. Uh, so right. it was... Just a very awe-inspiring building, and I, I tried to show a shot that at least showed a, a good segment of the right, building. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I took a number of shots of it. And this is, uh, you know, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful cathedrals 
in all of Italy. And yeah. uh, we did we did a, a show on it, the Orvieto Cathedral, mm. with my friend Rick Hurst, who um, kind of is an expert on the cathedral, and also spoke about. Did you go into the San Brizio Chapel? With the, the with the art by uh, Piero della Francesca. No, no. Okay, well. Oh, that was I- I- inside. In, in, in there is the oh, sun. Yeah, I, I yeah, ju- yeah, 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 yeah. No, I just wasn't. Oh, okay. I saw beautiful okay. art, but I yeah, wasn't yeah. Uh, sure okay. who the who the right. artist was. Uh, do you do you happen to know why um, such Uh-oh. a beautiful, huge cathedral was built in a town the size of Orvieto as opposed to? One of the major cities. Well, this is you know this is a big cathedral, but it's not it's not like the Duomo in Florence. Mm. I mean, the Duomo in Florence makes dwarfs you know this this building. It, so this is big, but not not that big by by standards of uh, of Italy. You know the Tuscan towns. Well, I was in the Duomo in Florence, but this this left more of an impression uh, mm. on me. It's yeah. interesting because the Duomo is much much larger, and then you have of course you know the cathedral in Pisa and. You know the one in Luca, equally as large. I mean, it's, this this is the way they built their their duomos. The duomo is the main, you know, church in yes. in, in a town. So yes. So it was always bigger than all the other churches. So let's move on, mm-hmm. and this. Well, the, the next morning I I strolled around and uh, found myself you know with some beautiful overlooks, and th- this was a favorite shot. You know, since I had to narrow it down. And right. And this is, I think you actually took this picture, if I can, you know, visualize it, from the en- the entrance to, uh, the, you know, Orvieto? Was it like kind of as you were on your way out or on, on your way in or something? I was heading from the hotel, and I, I wound up near the funicular. So this was right. somewhere in between right. the two. The funicular is the device that takes you up to the top from the from the train station. Yes. And I pointed out to you that this, this road right here, is the ancient Roman road that leads, you know, right into the town. And Franco was actually the one who told us about that mm. that road and gave us an introduction to the town from there. And very few people take that road. It's very narrow. It's kind of treacherous. Mm. And uh, my Fiat 500 actually <laughs> stalled on that road. So Franco had to get out of his car and start it for us. And then... Talk about this. Well, I, I just selected this as kind of a fun memory shot. Uh, I, I wandered around town later uh, that that morning, early afternoon, before heading out to Florence, and I got caught in a serious rainstorm. and And this was a shop that was known for serving wild boar. And you know, having been a modified vegetarian for the past thirty years or so, I just found it amusing that that was, that was where I stopped because I wanted it to get is. out of the rain. <laughs> And I ordered some uh, something very simple, bruschetta. <laughs> bruschetta. 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 Oh. Okay. We did a show on the on the merchants of Orvieto, and uh, I don't know if this was one of the one of the uh, stopping off points, but uh, well, it was just kind of fun inside with all of these things written down yeah. and and parts of wild boar hanging from the. And ceiling. if you would mention Franco's name, they probably would have given you oh. a discount. Always mention Franco Sala. I'll remember that. I'm a friend of Franco Sala. That's all you have to say. Okay, so then, then of course, you wind up uh, back on the train, I guess, and uh, you're now in Florence. And this, again, is a picture that, um, you know, that's that's one one of uh, Laura's pictures of Mm. Florence from the Pietale Michelangelo. Mm. And this is a magnificent picture of what Florence looks like um, from the south, looking north towards Fiesole, and you arrived at the train station. Again, this is one of my photos. I have kind of a funny train story. It's a little oh, little out of sequence. Well, I, I figured I'd be very efficient and buy my okay. ticket back to Rome. You know, when I was going to be in Florence for four nights and then right. he- head back to Rome. So I, I bought a ticket that would take me back to Rome as well. And when I wound up leaving Rome, I found myself on the the region uh, regionale, regionale. regionale instead of the express, which would have been an hour and a half as opposed to right. <laughs> close four to four hours. hours. So right. uh, I was a little annoyed at, at that, but the uh, the conductor I, came I, around. That's my fault. I should have told you that. Yeah, I, I take full responsibility. No, no. For that. <laughs> well, the conductor made everything all right. He said. 
well, enjoy the scenery. And I yeah. said, yeah, well, you know, that's a good idea. So. And you passed, <laughs> I don't know how many little towns it go, you know, the, the, the train goes through, but I would have to think at least 20 to 30 towns there along were, the way. There were quite a really, few. Really, every little town along the way. But, I, you know, I had my little iPad mini, which right. was a godsend on this trip. If you want to know more about how so, I, I'd be happy to talk a little bit about that. Um, you mean the, a Kindle? No, it was it was an Apple, an iPad. Oh, okay. And, uh, you know, I, I had uh, downloaded the app Google Maps, which oh. really saved me from getting lost quite a bit. You yeah. were able to um, download, you know, to plug in a city and you'd have this little ball following you wherever you go right. so uh-huh. uh, it, it really prevented a, a lot of <laughs> a lot of false uh, false Good. steps Excellent. that's and, the way to do it and i had your book on there and i had rick steve's guide book on there and i had audio guides to the different museums on there and i had a camera so and i i had uh, i was able to skype uh, my husband howie from there so oh, it, wow. it was it was just a wonderful little mm-hmm. device to have on a trip like this. Wow. I, I had just bought it a few weeks before and learned how to use it. Outstanding. So then, you know, you got to the hotel that I recommended, Croce de yes. Malta, where I've yeah. stayed many times. And I met Luca, you your met friend. met my friend and Luca, he was right. most gracious. And, and this is the... Yeah, he gave you a nice room. Very nice He better room. have given you a nice room. <laughs> he gave me a nice room. <laughs> <laughs> and he was very lovely and... Uh, it, it was really a wonderful place and in a, a wonderful central location and everything was 10, 15 minutes right, away. It was right. just terrific. Great. And yeah. this is the photo you chose to... Well, I, I wanted... Uh, this was taken... You, 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 yeah, you pointed you, out right. where it was from. It was from. taken from this window <laughs> of the Uffizi. Wow. Okay. And that's... You know, everybody goes around the Uffizi on the second floor but stops at this window to take... <laughs> this photograph and you could see why yeah well it was a lovely shot I, I wanted something of the uh, Ponte Vecchio and it also had several of the other bridges behind it and I, I know at the end of that second bridge was uh, my favorite uh, gelati place that right. I stumbled right. upon and uh, right. it, 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 I just thought it was quite gelato nice Santa Trinita ah yes, yes. <laughs> and, and our favorite gelato one of our favorites <laughs> is, is on the other side of the third bridge so okay. that's the well probably a, a nice outing would be to go from bridge to bridge right. and the gelato place to, to gelato, gelato, gelato <laughs> right yes yeah, so, well and you have to have the same flavor so you can really um, compare the two flavors ab- you know. well i did find a difference in rome i had gelato that was really too sweet for my taste and this place they really nailed it florence has the best gelato ah, okay. in the world in my opinion of course i'm partial I'm partial to florence to florence that's the uffizi and and Talk about this, because at first I didn't know where this was. Ah, well, of course I made it to the Uffizi on uh, my first full day in Florence. That that was a definite, and fortunately uh, had Luca uh, secure the tickets in advance, and mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. saved me a lot of time waiting online. And this was um, there was a cafeteria, and if you wanted, you could also you know get some food. Uh, you know, I forget if it was by the pound as it was in some mm-hmm. places or, you know, just get some food and sit outside. And this was a, a large porch that right. overlooked a few other buildings. And uh, I was still at the Uffizi, but, uh, you know, taking that little uh, midday break to give me more energy for seeing right. more art. Right. But So uh, how long were you in the Uffizi? Oh, boy. Uh, several several hours. Really? I really like to look at art. Good work. Uh, I'd say about four hours or so. Really? Right. That's, uh, that's pretty good. I, I have a hard time after about an hour and a half to two hours in a museum. Of course, this is one of the great museums in the world. It and was, it's all chronological, as I indicated. It was wonderful. And great. I'm an artist, so you know, going there was definitely one of the things I was most looking forward to. Right. And uh, I mean, it was overwhelming. Uh, I loved particularly the Botticelli room. Right. It was one of my very favorites. But... Uh, I must say, nothing really disappointed there. Yeah. It was yeah. just, uh, you know, artists that... I, I studied art uh, in college and studied art my whole life. And uh, Western art was something that we learned about more than anything else. And not only did I see many of the great uh, Italian artists, but they had many great Belgian artists mm-hmm. and, you know, Northern European artists. And 
It, it was just wonderful. Actually, even while I was in Rome, I even got to see a Frida Kahlo exhibit, which mm. was a, an extra treat wow. because it just happened to Laura's be happening at that right time. <laughs> because we're always looking, when we go to Rome, we're always looking for exhibitions uh, because those are really great sometimes. I mean, we've seen some really wonderful ones. But that would have been really great if we had seen that one. Yeah, she, you don't get to see her work too often, yeah. so it, yeah. that was an, an extra so treat. So, do, do you remember where that exhibition was? I have it written down. Hello, this is <laughs> If I could find it, because I, right. I wrote down a few things. Uh, the Scuderie del Quir Quirinale. Uh, the Quirinale, yes. Yes. Okay, yes. okay. that's a well-known place. I've never been there, but I've heard of it. Okay. Okay, let's move on. And uh, I got this. So um, we're back, we're in Florence now, still in Florence. Yes, well, this was uh, the rooftop of the uh, Croce de Malta Hotel, which was such a major treat. I mean, you, you had mentioned to me, make sure you make it up to the rooftop. Right. And I wasn't able to every day because, well, they opened at five, but uh, a couple of the days were rainy. But uh, a couple of the days I was able to make it up there. And I, right, yeah. I sat there as long as I could yeah, <laughs> because it was just. Paradise. Uh, you could tell from the Orvieto uh, Tower. I, I do in, especially enjoy these uh, the climbs, these overlooks right. where you get to see everything, and of of course a three hundred and sixty degree view from here. And I, I didn't have to uh, wait online to go up to the top of the Duomo because I had my own little paradise at the hotel. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yeah. and there's the Duomo right there. Yep. Right off center with the Campanile <laughs> yes. and the Palazzo Vecchio on the extreme right hand side. This building right here is the Palazzo Vecchio. So you get a great view. And we have another one here. And this was, I thought this was really a spectacular picture. Well, it was because, you know, like it was kind of a, a stormy sky, but there, there was also sections of sunlight. So it was really a, a picture of great contrast. So. Right. I guess I was inspired by uh, seeing a Caravaggio earlier that day. <laughs> it looked like it was about to rain any minute. So. Yeah, it probably did, but yeah. uh, it really provided a great shot for me. Okay, and, and that was the, the Piazza uh, della Repubblica. Repubblica, which I loved it. I, I just stumbled upon it when I was, I think I was coming home from the uh, Academy or from the Duomo. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, I was looking for a place to eat because I was hungry, and uh, you knew the name of the place where I wound up. Paskowski, right? Yeah, and that was a place where you were able to say, I want a little of this, a little of that, and right. they'd weigh yeah. it, and uh, those were my very favorite uh, type of places for mm -hmm. lunch because I uh, I love that mix of vegetables and pasta. Whatever. And I mentioned to you that uh, Luca and I uh, went out um, one afternoon, and he took me to the Piazza della Repubblica, I thought he was going to take me to Paskowski or Bar Julie, mm -hmm. and he took me to a third place. There are places all around, yeah. so it's really it's a, it's a fun place. And I love with carousel. With that wonderful carousel yeah. right in the middle, yeah. Yeah, so very festive. And, uh... Well, this is one of your, uh... No, this is yours. Favorite, well, well, one of well, your favorite churches. Well, this is one of my churches. favorite churches, right, I re right. I remembered that you had mentioned it, and it was really... Santa Maria Novella. Yes, it was, uh you know, basically around the corner from the, <laughs> the hotel, more or less. So, of course, I had to go there and check it out. And, uh, I mean, I, it looked like a, a relatively small uh, cathedral from the outside, but it was, it was just beautiful, beautiful. I mean, each each cathedral had beautiful artwork and the tile work on the floor and yeah. the ceilings and the, the you know, just the... Um, architecture and the the yard everything about it and was And the beautiful. great frescoes along the right hand side are Ghirlandaios. Your favorite artist. <laughs> well, you bought me a book as a gift. Thank you very much for that book. My pleasure. And I'll be talking about Ghirlandaio on the next show and we'll be talking about those particular frescoes well, in the Turner preview. Holy Chapel. So. Okay, now go ahead. Now, this was um, the... Um, Oh, Bobbly Gardens. <laughs> Thank you. See, it's it's helpful when you're uh, yes. two two That's, two I'm minds here to working that, together. Yes. Uh, well, this was on May Day, which was another mm. big nat national holiday, and actually going to the Bobbly Gardens was free that day. Mm. And uh, I I must have walked around there about um, four hours or so because it was just so beautiful and. Each and you like myself. climbing, so... I do. I like walking, yeah. and uh, I, I didn't put on any weight in Rome, even though I ate very right. well. Very <laughs> few people do. This is another view of the Boboli Gardens. 
yes, just walking down this uh, pathway and, and flanked by sculptures on either side. It was, right. you know, everywhere you looked was beautiful. And again, one of the previous Allen's Italy's is a show that focuses on the Bobley Gardens and the museum um, that was attached to it. The Pity Palace. That was closed. Into, that oh, was closed oh, really? that day. Well, oh. it was a national holiday, yeah, so some right, some right, places right. were closed, some were open, some were free to the public. It was right. it was a mix. And and just another spot from there. I, I like taking pictures of of couples in a romantic pose uh, from the back. I, th I thought that you know the, the city was so romantic. So. And this is a great view of Florence that you get from a different viewpoint from the Piazzale Michelangelo. Get that out of the way. And again, it was one of those days with mixed sun and clouds, yeah, so you I get that, that very interesting lighting. And, I uh, see that. Yeah. Okay, so... And, uh, yeah, after walking around, I was hungry, and I stopped in a little shop where they weighed my lunch by the pound, and I saw a bunch of people were sitting on the... Uh, uh, the piazza outside of the, the Palazzo Palace. Pitti, yes. Yeah, and uh, I joined them and sat down and had some lunch. and. That's a nice piazza. Yeah, it was lovely. Can't... Not that. And oh. then Lydia's store. Yes. On Via della Scala. Half a block from where I was right, staying. And right. It was so wonderful. It was like I, thanks to you, I had a friend in Florence. And there, there you are. Yeah, I stopped in every day and we'd schmooze, or however you say schmooze in, in Italian. I, <laughs> and, I'm not uh, sure. But, um, and I wound up buying a few things from her because I, I thought her work was wonderful. Uh, wallet and right, keychain yeah. and such mm -hmm. but uh, she was a delightful warm but you person. didn't get a chance to uh, dine with her because she was God she go was doing it was a special week where she was doing a uh, craftsperson and vendors uh, show at the fortress uh, I forget the Fortezza name. Passo yes and she gave me uh, a ticket to go there and mm. I went there that evening and uh, it was like going to the Jacob Javits Center. There was yeah, just a yeah. lot going on, uh -huh. a lot of vendors selling interesting things. I, I bought these lovely earrings there, okay. which I really uh, enjoy very much. I yes, and you showed me a couple it. of things that you bought at Lydia's. Oh, yes. Well, so you could, you know, yes, show I, uh, us that. Well, just this lovely uh, keychain. And uh, she, she revolutionized the way that I... Um, I keep my money and cards now right. because I have a purse for, for money only and, and yeah. something separate for cards. And it's actually made my life a lot easier. Good. Finding I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll email Lydia and tell her that. <laughs> but I love the softness of the, yeah. the Italian leather. Right. Is just and, and these are things that I have on me every day and take out every day. So I'm constantly well, reminded of I know the, the trip. Feeling. Yeah. I know the feeling. So Okay, so this... I couldn't recognize it all. Uh, this, so tell us. this was the uh, uh, Museo di San Marco, which uh, I went to on my last day in Florence. And here was a conservationist. Uh, you could see he's bringing uh, some of the work to, to life. But this was um, Fra Angelica. And I guess if I had to pick one artist who was my favorite, I mean, that's, that's a tough call, yeah. but I, I just love the delicacy and the the beauty of his work, and uh, I, I enjoyed this so much. Uh, right. Years ago, I studied art uh, at the Art Students League with Will Barnett, and I remember he always talked about Fra Angelica and his compositions mm -hmm. and uh, uh, getting to see this work, especially uh, upstairs at this museum. They had mm -hmm. these rooms called cells, and each room had a fresco, its own fresco, yeah. and it was just amazing going I think there were 36 rooms going mm. from room to room and each one had uh, a magnificent piece on the wall and it, this is the this, this is the place to see Fra Angelica oh yes it certainly so that's, was that's that was, that was a great choice oh I loved it all right now you're back in Rome actually and, back and in then, Rome you're and then actually back Pompe in Pompeii right yes the day after I arrived in Rome uh, was the day that my cousin rented the car and we drove up we drove down <laughs> to right. Pompeii, right? And uh, we walked around there. Oh, I'd say I'm going to move a little bit for faster about four or now. five hours. This is the theater. Yes, you could see it was a wet day, yeah. so it was a little slippery. We had to watch our step, and uh, 
but it it was just wonderful. I mean, it it was just an amazing place. I I love this shot. This is a great shot. photo. Yeah, they it seems like they're they're making an effort to bring things more to life there. Uh, mm -hmm. Have more uh, make it look more like it used to look by having some um, people planting things and mm -hmm. things coming to life. Uh, um, gardening there. So, uh, there is no that, greater, you know, excavation archaeological site in the world, I think. I, mean, um, I haven't been all over the world, so it's hard to say. But no, it it was an amazing place, and we really only covered about half of it. And I'd say we walked for about four and a half hours. Right. And uh, we finished at about seven, and then we got in the car, and it, it was it was a long day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. But we just couldn't this seem to stop. This is a great stop. photo through the arch. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, oh, back next, to Rome. Next day back in Rome. And there's the Down Temple to my, of Saturn. My last two days, and mm -hmm. I walked with Scott. We uh, uh, had some overlooks. We, we, we didn't go uh, down in, into the forum itself. Mm -hmm. We looked at it from outside. That's a, that's a great way of seeing it. That's yeah. a really the best way of seeing it. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, we didn't, we, neither of us were really up for waiting on lines or anything yeah. like that. And, and any time you go to any of the major sites, it just seemed that there were lots and lots of people. Right. So. And I'll tell you, the best view of the Roman Forum is not from right in the Forum, but from around the Forum, because you really get a, a flavor for the majesty of it. There, we started out by going somewhere where we really had to walk up. Now, this was a serious, serious flight of stairs. Uh, and we looked, we were at the top of the stairs, yeah. we, we looked down. The Campidoglio. Oh, yes. Yeah, the Campidoglio. Yes, that was it. Yeah. That uh -huh. was it. And that was magnificent. And then we strolled around uh, many different spots. He right. knew where to go because right. he yeah. had been there yeah. before. But so you're right behind the, the, actually what's called the Senate building, and you're taking this picture from that vantage point, which is a great spot to, to photograph the I took, Roman Forum. I took several shots, and each one was beautiful. I right. just had to pick one because right. I had to narrow it okay, down. Let me see. What, I, I forgot what I have next. Oh, oh. We're, we're still in Rome. Well, okay. this, this was the path that led, you know, the forum was on the, the right, right, and then we'd head toward the Colosseum. And it was a Sunday, so everyone was out. It was very festive. And as and I told you, I've never seen <laughs> the Via dei Fori Imperiali, is the name of the street, this crowded, so... Well, it, it was a Sunday. Uh, it was the a four day weekend that started out with uh, May Day, so it it was a busy time, and uh, there were lots of street performers. It was it was lovely, you know. Even though it was crowded, and I, I generally shy away from crowds, but it was very exciting, very festive, and okay, loved it. I think it. this could be the last one. Oh, no? this one. This yeah, well, this of course. Oh no, yes. we have two two more. Okay, yes, okay. Uh, this was a spot that uh, Mira, Scott's uh, girlfriend, had taken us to uh, up a geniculum hill. And it, it was in the, uh, I think it's considered Trevestere. Trevestere. Trevestere, okay, thank you. See? <laughs> but um, we, I, I went there again on my last day because they were just beautiful overlooks and uh, the, they had um, just beautiful statues of all the men who were involved mm -hmm. in the unification of, of Italy. And there's one more, yes? This one, one more. This was in Vatican City. Right. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I can't identify exactly where, but and I was I, on I the way either. to the Vatican Museum. Right. And I, I just liked the shot with the columns. So. Okay. Now, I just want to, you know, very quickly point out a picture. This is upcoming shows. We've just come back from a trip. And uh, this is, uh, we, Laura and I have begun the process of editing. And this is one of the pictures of Laura and I on a boat uh, with, with the town of Verena on Lake Como behind us. So this is Beautiful. upcoming. We also have the Ghirlandaio show, which is the next show on Allen's Italy. But uh, um, Ellen, do we have like two minutes? Yeah. We have two minutes. Oh. Okay, so we're going to, I was going to ask you, you're an artist. Yes. So <laughs> I wanted you to show your art. So. Okay, I brought a, a couple of pieces. Okay, let me get one and you get the other. Okay. And we'll come back to the chair. Chairs. I think it'll be easier for Ellen to show them. Which one do you want to show first? Well, maybe the one you're holding. Okay, okay. So yeah. here we go. Is this, is this okay, Ellen? Right on top of the... Yeah, that's fine. Let me get this out of it. Just a minute. 
Yeah, I'm a mixed media artist, and uh, I had done this. Um, I guess for it was an there was an exhibit on uh, against fracking in New York City a, a couple of years back, and I think that's where I was inspired uh, to do this piece. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, it, it, I took off on Grant Wood's American Gothic, just as many artists do. But uh, sometimes I'll make a, a statement in my work. Um, the the other piece I brought is more. Okay, I guess you want to maybe, show that as well? Yeah, maybe. Yes, okay. Um, my work often deals with, I guess, mystical themes, and uh, I, I, I like exploring right. that, the mystery. Uh -huh. This one was called Great Mother, and uh, it, it's also a, a statement, uh, I guess, in a, a less obvious way than the other piece, of, uh, I guess, the state of the, the planet is how I would interpret it. People right. always seem to have their own interpretations uh -huh. of my work. And if people want to see more of your art, they could they see can, it at www. www.erica, E-R-I-C-A, heart, H-A-R-T, art, A-R-T, dot com. Okay. Yeah, I'd love Thank that. Thank you very much. Uh, Let's take this and put it down. And uh, let me say to you, sit down for a moment here. Thank you very, very much for being on the show. I appreciate it. It was and my And you pleasure. sound like you had a great trip. I did. I did. And uh, I'm glad you did. It was a lot packed into two weeks. Right. Was... <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, we hope you enjoyed the show to our audience. And uh, on behalf of Erica and me, buona notte e buona fortuna. Excellent. All right. How do you think it went?